Why the two V's? Welcome to Black Angus Reviews. I'm Black Angus, and today we'll be talking about 2015's The Witch. Yes, there will be spoilers. Duh! What went we out into this wilderness to find? Leaving our country, kindred, our father's houses. For what? For the kingdom of God. Let us pray. From A24 Films, known for unique thrillers like It Comes at Night, Enemy, Under the Skin, and the Oscar-winning Ex Machina, the Witch is directed by Robert Eggers and follows the events of a 1630s Puritan family, having been cast out from their plantation to survive the treacherous New England wilderness, dealing with the evils beyond their farm. This film had a lot of hype and instantly calls to mind The Shining. In the festival circuit, the film landed Eggers a Best Director Award at the Sundance Film Festival. On a budget of $4 million, The Witch made ten times that, but received the ire of general audiences, with the current Rotten Tomatoes standing of 57%, against a critical approval of 91. From seeing the trailers, one can easily deduce why the score difference is so vast, as it's marketed so well like a Blumhouse film. I can personally attest to this, as I went the opening day, and for a sparsely marketed film, it had a fair-sized audience, and most of them were not the kind of people that can sit and absorb a movie and allow it to tell them something without any carrot dangling before them. It's the film we all ask for, but never see when someone gives it to us. What's great about The Witch is that from the beginning, you understand the direction, as it forsakes the typical skin of a period piece and fully immerses itself in the Puritan setting. At times, the film can seem very obvious with various film inspirations like The Shining, The Exorcist, and Rosemary's Baby, but it quickly draws you back, almost hypnotically, defining itself from its predecessors. Instead of copping out and becoming a cliché lost in the woods trope, and always making you wonder what's behind a character, you end up more concerned with what's in their head and what effect they will have. From gathering information in interviews and the Blu-ray commentary, it's clear the level of craftsmanship that was put in this film, given the budget is astounding. <coughs> DC. So Eggers spent four years crafting this film, building a real Puritan farm with real Puritan tools, studying real witch trial documents and the preserved dialogue, along with the Calvinist-based Geneva Bible, while also maintaining the Puritan philosophy encompassed. The film delivers through slow pans, long establishing shots, and a haunting soundtrack of wailing souls that captures a sense of paranoia and claustrophobia. Within the first ten minutes, we learn that this film holds nothing back, stripping away any sense of innocence, as not only is baby Sam abducted by a creature, but crushed to a pulp, creating a witch's flying ointment. The abduction immediately isolates our main character, Thomason, as the paranoia begins to set in on the rest of the family. What sets the film apart from most is its attention to detail. With a tiny, decrepit farm surrounded by tall, suffocating forests, letting us feel the family's subjugation to all that is wild and of this world. Both at the plantation and at home, the witch details the separation of sexes, with men and women being set apart both in court and at the dinner table, revealing the distrust of the fair sex. A couple of clever themes, sexuality and doubt, are both betrayed through Thomason, either in her own actions or how she is received by her family, from her doubt first displayed in court for her father's decision, rooted in pride, along with her name, Thomason, we can begin to understand her role as a doubting Thomas. Through the film, we witness this escalate as she further and further questions the rationale of her family's beliefs. 
Her budding body also sets her apart as her parents struggle with how to handle it, despite Thomason herself never having it become a point of confrontation. With Caleb, her brother who's recently hit puberty himself, we see him notice Thomason's growing breasts and find himself at odds with his guilt both visually and in dialogue concerning Sam, who according to Puritan belief is lost even to God and required to be cast from thought. The despair of sex finally culminates when Caleb is lost in the woods, seduced by the witch, giving in to his carnal nature. He strangely returns home, sick, and dies, vomiting an apple, a sign of tasting the forbidden fruit. This, along with the disappearance of a family chalice, sets the family in disarray. The twins reveal that Thomason was found speaking to Black Philip, the horned ram. Not knowing who to trust, the father boards up Thomason and her remaining siblings in a hovel of a barn with Black Philip and other goats. Later, the mother believes she is breastfeeding Sam, only to be revealed to the audience to be a crow, pecking at her breasts. That night, Thomason is awakened to find an old hag feasting on the blood of a white goat. In the morning, she awakens to see her father, witness to the barn destroyed, goats eviscerated, and Thomason's hands soaked in blood. Before her father can act, Black Philip gores him, and in resignation, he accepts his death. Soon after, the mother discovers the scene and attempts to kill Thomason, who retaliates in self-defense, killing her. Exhausted, Thomason wakes up later that night alone and tries a last-ditch effort at finding company in Black Philip. When she begins to give up, the goat speaks to her and transforms to a man, asking if she'd like to live deliciously. She accepts, follows Philip, and finds a coven of naked, dancing witches. In the end, she laughs with them and begins to levitate. Eggers has said that it's up to the viewer whether the witches are a real entity in the film, leaving it to interpretation. I personally think that what we see unfold is a real series of events, following Thomason trying desperately to conform to the correct way of life only to be constantly tormented. Only when she can cast aside her inhibitions do we see her find happiness, being accepted by that which she's feared the most. In the end, Thomason is the title witch. Above all, what makes the witch work so well is in knowing just the right amount for every ingredient needed. In horror and sci-fi, films get too distracted with exposition line, working so hard to tell you everything that's going on that it ruins the tone. Instead of customary disparaging of religious fanaticism that witch trials were, with the benefit of mass ignorance, it instead makes characters that allow us to understand the motivation for this set of beliefs at this time and its effect. In Thomason, the film perfectly embodies the plight of victims of the infamous witch trials, who through coincidence and with the onset of ill tidings, became an easy scapegoat in which to purge the perceived terrors of the devil were able to experience the influence of society's judgment in a way that hasn't been accomplished to this degree since the Scarlet Witch. The witch effectively casts aside expectation. With the tension constantly leveling up, we expect the father to cut his hand while chopping corn, or a creature to unexpectedly snatch one of the family members, or even an old hag to snatch someone off screen. The film subverts all of this and instead focuses on the psychological fears of belief, and the de-evolution of the mind, setting a family against one another. In the end, it begs the question, wouldst thou like to live deliciously? What's interesting when researching the witch is that in the religious community, it turned out to be quite divisive, with various conservative Christian groups disparaging the truly bare-bones desperate attitudes towards God, while the Satanic Temple, an atheist or non-theist religion, embraced for the film for its, quote, Themes in the film mirroring the things we talk about in our work. It's a criticism of a theocratic patriarchal society and a fair representation of the stresses that puts on a community. That quote being from Jex Blackmore, a former spokesman for the Satanic Temple and head of its Detroit chapter. Just to be factual, Blackmore is no longer a spokesman for the temple and has since moved on to more passionate activism. The Satanic Temple endorsement went so far as to influence the distribution chief in how they would market the film, cutting costs. 
I've enjoyed reviewing this film and hope you enjoy watching this as well as the actual film. I suggest buying it on Vudu or Blu-ray, or at least requesting it for free at your local library. From its release until I die, I will defend this as a truly great film for both its craft and how it's delivered. In closing, I'd like to give a shout out to World Class Bullshitters. Check them out for all your nerd needs without any of the PC bullshit that may normally accompany it. If you're puzzled at the opening line, I'm referring to the title spelling of The Witch as, fun fact, it's a reference to the time period using V's when their newspapers ran out of W's, as well as a personal shout out to my first subscriber. Please like and subscribe if you like what you've heard and want to hear more. Also feel free to comment or join the Facebook page, Black Angus Reviews, for news of upcoming videos and interesting posts concerning film, philosophy, and the NFL. I'm Black Angus.